Okay, so let's let's move on. Another thing that we need to introduce is pulse area theorem. So you can excite your system with a pulse of a certain length in time, and only the area under the pulse in time is what matters for the number of transitions between your levels. So it's area in time. It's hard to think about it. So the pulse still has some X dependence because it's usually not a rectangular pulse. Although we started with a rectangular pulse in class, but then we saw that a Gaussian pulse is more realistic. So this is the, the X dependence just tells you the shape, the envelope of the pulse. And the uh, area is actually area in time. It's not area in space. So if you have, a, for example, a pi over 2 pulse, it's an important one because it uh, uh, drives the occupancies of the two levels to one half. Uh, pi pulse is also special to look at because it totally flips the occupation uh, numbers. Uh, the dotted lines in this figure are uh, the complex phases of the occupancies, which will be important later. The solid lines are the occupation. So the occupation of excited state, occupation of, sorry, blue is occupation of ground state, which is one at the beginning, green is occupation of excited state. So only the area under the pulse matters. 